welcome to another episode of IAFM, <laughs> <laughs> aka in a real minute. Forgive our dogs. Hi, Ryan. Hello. Ryan Reed, premier photographer in Fairfield County and beyond. Yes. <laughs> in the house. Well, not our house, but in his studio on our computer. In our house. <laughs> How are you, Ryan? Great. Happy to be here. Nice. Um, so a little background. I met Ryan, was it a year ago already? I don't even I feel like it was probably a year ago or so. About a year I think ago. It's been about a year ago. This is wild. Um, a lot what has happened. What a way happened. to celebrate, right? <laughs> yeah, so I met Ryan through a mutual friend um, because at the time I was looking for a boudoir photographer and um, I found him. <laughs> and it was an awesome experience. Um, and Ryan, you're also expanded. I mean, you don't just do boudoir photography, right? I've seen you do, you know, you're at wedding expos now, you're, you know, you go much more, you know, beyond just that. Um, so do you want to give us a little, just a quick little nugget on like what, what you do? Um, and also we'll get into like your new studio space. So. Yeah, definitely. So uh, I would say about a year ago, uh, yeah. you didn't know this at the time. I you did were the first, it. You were the first client after I rebranded myself to be uh, mostly boudoir photography. Right. So I had a, a decent amount of experience doing portrait photography, um, event photography, but uh, I was kind of all over the place, a little bit scatterbrained. So I yeah. decided, you know what, I want to get really good at one thing mm -hmm. and, and really take off. So, so yeah, so I rebranded. I, I decided to focus strictly on boudoir photography. There's a lot of uh, empowerment and positive messaging that yeah. goes into that type of photography and it's really life-changing in, in my opinion um, yeah but yeah along along the way I, I, I shoot couples engagements um I'm actually going to be in Alaska later this summer and should be in a wedding so that's amazing so, yeah. well let's it's, rewind it's, a second you're originally from Alaska right yes it's I, I took a wrong turn at Albuquerque it, <laughs> it, it, how did you end up here <laughs> I don't even know how I wound up. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, originally from Alaska, born and raised. Uh, my wife's from California. And this year will be 20 years since I've been back home to Alaska. And also 20 years since we've been married. So you can see the correlation there, right? I do. Yeah. <laughs> right? That's wild. <laughs> Alaska's a beautiful state, but my wife is even more beautiful. So uh, I love hang that. around her more often. And um, I love, I love how supportive she is of everything you do. Like we always see her when you're posting, you know, like she's at the expos with you. I remember when we were having our own session, like I remember you telling me, like, my wife, you know, has always reminded me, like fixing the hair or doing this. Like, I feel like she's such a big part and such a support system for you. And her name is, is Nitzia. Is, am I pronouncing it right? I've never met her in person. I've only seen her in pictures. <laughs> Don't, you're not the first person to mess up her name. Okay, good. So, <laughs> it's Juanita. It was, it was we, we try to make it easy for people and say Nita with short yeah. net and, and that usually that usually does the job but no she's fantastic um she comes to shoots if someone uh feels they want to have somebody at the shoot she comes to the shoot she like you said she helps adjust bra straps if they're oh. inside out helps fix hair um yeah. and then i have my oldest i have four children so that's a whole nother story oh yeah um, we'll get there okay oh, yeah. we got a lot to cover um, I have four children. My oldest is a freshman at UConn Stanford, and wow, uh, she's very artistically inclined. So she's kind of also my my self check when I'm kind of frustrated and I'm trying to get through an edit and I just can't fill the flow. I bring her in and say, "Does this look right? Where am I right. missing?" Oh, so, oh, I love that. It, it, it's a family affair, and and <laughs> definitely as we're moving into the studio, everyone was involved. My my high yeah. school sophomore was in here pulling up carpet with me, and uh, oh. and the 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 college freshman is my local. Uh, I'm gonna mess this one up. Horticult horticulturist. Really? So she uh, she takes care of all the plants. So she. Oh, I she, love it. She came in and I kind of gave her the business card and we ordered a bunch of plants and now she comes and takes care of them. So 
I love it. How long has she been interested in that? Has that always uh, been a thing for her? It kind of was a quarantine thing. Oh, you know, I love it. Maintain sanity by uh, <laughs> having your little plant friends that you talk to. <laughs> I'm gonna um I'm gonna go and get the dogs out of here because it's just not fair to you to this is just they're not, crazy they're they're just crazy um and I actually have to go back to work unfortunately <laughs> no but I did want to well. say hi um, <laughs> yeah they're nuts I know um and I'm sorry I couldn't be a part of it completely but you were just what? here for a fair filled minute <laughs> yeah literally <laughs> Kyle is just gonna we're gonna actually get the um post the the poster board of me. Like Chris hasn't moved in 37 minutes. What on earth is going on? It's very quiet today. It would be more amazing if Paula was like, "Get out of Thank here!" Thank you so much for your time, man. I appreciate it. I look forward to actually watching it now. <laughs> I know the dogs are nuts. So, are you, did you tell me that she was growing plants as well? Is she? Did this become like a whole new venture? Well, so. She didn't move out, so she stays at home. So we kind of gave her the basement, <laughs> and it's turned into her little living area. So she's made the love best it. of it. I absolutely love it. Awesome. So Ryan, where um, I said Fairfield County, do you go actually beyond Fairfield County? Um, or uh, to obviously you're going to Alaska, so obviously you'd go beyond Fairfield County. But do you have like a, a certain stretch? Like, is it like Fairfield County, Westchester County that you kind of stick to in this area, or is will you travel for for the work? Uh, I'll travel for the work. I think yeah. I think as anybody that is, I know you you probably see this with the the Fairfield Minute is yeah. when it comes to marketing and it comes to website optimization and everything else. You kind of have to localize it a little bit so you get up in those search feeds, but really sure. I'll go wherever, wherever. I'm actually going up to Maine at the end of April to do a couple of shoot up there. Um, so I'll go where it takes me. I'm, and you know, I kind of have like a set list of yeah. uh, destination locations that, that I'd offer significant discounts to if someone can have an event there or whether it's an engagement or a wedding or the like. Um, Cause I like to travel too. So why not yeah. incorporate it into, into the photography as well. Is there anywhere that's like your dream place to go work? I really need somebody to have a destination wedding in the Caribbean. That'd be fantastic. Oh my God, that'd be incredible. <laughs> I'll and come just show there. up with just show up with swim trunks and my camera and that's it. That's all I'm right. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, so what is um are you focused like highly on on weddings, right? What do you feel is like trending right now? What are people looking for? Um, it's you know, I think. One of the reasons why I chose boudoir is that wedding and engagement photography is pretty saturated in this area with photographers. Mm -hmm. um, some people just need a couple photos for their wedding invites, for their save the dates. Others right. need, um, people are a lot more all over the place in what they're looking for in the budget that they have. Yeah. So that's kind of why I think I, I, I enjoy boudoir photography is because it's yeah. a little more certain that if someone's doing it, they're doing it because they want to do it. They're not doing it because it's just the thing to do, like like uh, Correct. like wedding and engagement. So actually, when we were at the wedding expos this spring, it was actually there to promote the boudoir photography to actually get brides interested in getting that gift for uh, for their fiance on their wedding day. Um, yeah. awesome. And of course, you see, you. As you're at a wedding expo, you get uh, you get brides, you get the mothers of the brides, you get the bridesmaids, and, right. and you try to get as much contact with as much people, and right, very self fulfilling. Um, but that's that's kind of where I'm at. Uh, you know, I'd love to have engagement and wedding photography uh, take off, but really, that's why we got the studio was not for wedding and engagement so much as it was for the for the boudoir photography. Right. So walk us through. So Ryan is in his brand new studio he's just you know painted ripped up the carpet like done done the whole thing right so we're we're maybe th what three quarters of the way there kind of <laughs> you know not, i'd say actually probably closer to 90 90 percent i could probably nice. i could actually bring people in today and, and do shoots if, if i needed to okay um so a little bit of background you got to start somewhere right right um holly you know this uh 
clients would book a hotel room, we'd go, we'd do their boudoir shoot there. Um, right. I quickly found out that that really triggered my anxiety a lot because you show up to a hotel room and you don't know what the lighting's like and you show up to a different hotel room, you, sh you show, uh, it's totally different because I primarily do natural light when I do the boudoir photography, so. Part of um, the good call. yeah. It was all You're over the place. Expected. Right. Yeah. And even and then, it in your own home, I guess that's also an option, but like not always viable if you have kids. Yeah. You know, like there's so many factors. Sometimes you do want to get away into your own space and feel like this is your time with no distractions and, you know, all that jazz. Exactly. So you can definitely see how that could be very stressful, especially you know, <laughs> when you're in, <laughs> right, when, when everything is your environment, like it, it's yeah. just reliant. And, and, and then you're able to be more consistent with your work as well. So I started using a great studio in Hartford, but then I started telling myself, why am I driving an hour, hour, 20 minutes each way? Yeah. Um, pain if I go over my allotted time. Um, I just was like, I would rather, if I'm having a really great time during a session, I'd love to just extend it longer and not have to worry about Letting the letting the studio owner know that hey I'm going over, and them telling me that no you need to get out because someone's coming in. Now I have a space where I could stay in as long as I want. Right. Um, so I figured you know what no more paying anybody else. Let's, Isn't that let's like just the get biggest thing? Local. Yeah, it, like it, it is. It, it's about. autonomy, and and I think you know it was really kind of the capstone to where I was a year ago to where I am at now. Um, mm -hmm. I think I'm always a little bit driven. So, yeah. So, sure, I wish everything was growing in terms of just being booked out two years, but that's not the case. But the slow growth has allowed me to kind of take calculated moves like we did. And now the studio is five minutes from the house. Uh, I think the other day I actually hit the drive without any red lights and I made it here in like 90 seconds. So. That's awesome. Oh my God. That's brilliant walk us through a session with you you know i've lived it but like what is your what is your goal when you walk into a session um and what's the process leading up to it i guess for you so, so you hit on you hit on the, the the key thing that i'm big on which is you're not just showing up to your session and you're just going to uh, get into your uh your more intimate apparel for your boudoir shoot Right. without any preparation. So the preparation actually starts with, with a phone consultation. I'm going to call you, you'll set up a time and we're going to see if we're a good fit. Maybe I'm not the right photographer for you. And if I'm not, that's totally okay. There's no harm, no foul for me. I want people right. to have great images, even if it's not for me. Um, so it starts with a phone consult. And then as soon as somebody books with us and they put down a retainer fee, yeah. Then the emails start, and I'm sure you remember this. It's a lot of emails. It's a from, lot, but it's not overwhelming. It is extremely, yeah. I'd say, almost like comforting because they're they're not just BS emails. Like they're they truly have information in them um, that prepare you for what you're going to go into. You know, like you, I'm sure you're going to mention like clothing, right? Where to shop? Where do where do I go to buy that stuff? Yeah. I don't want to pay Victoria's Secret prices, right? No. And you don't no. have to. Um, uh, and and we cover that. We cover what works best for your body type. We cover, you know, should you get extensions? Maybe Me. you should think about a manicure and a pedicure. You know, if you're going right. to treat yourself, you know, like right. this is this you want to look your best. Um, and we cover we cover every aspect. My goal is that when somebody shows up to their shoot, they have no more questions. They're just ready to go. So the day of the shoot, uh, you show up. Um, I use a, a few different local hair and makeup artists here in Connecticut. Um, you're going to go through hair and makeup for an hour, hour and a half. Um, hair and makeup artists will work with you depending depending on your skin type, your hair type. They're, they're really going to take care of you. They're really talented. And while you're doing that, we're also getting to know each other because chances are it's the first time we're meeting in person, right? And as I'm going to be cracking really corny jokes and trying to make you feel comfortable, <laughs> right? 
with you um, guys. Try to find some, <laughs> some sort of common ground. Very quickly, I found out uh, you're big on Mana, and I'm like, oh, I love Mana. <laughs> um, Great Latin and, pop rock band. <laughs> <laughs> uh so so then we then we then after you're done with hair and makeup we quickly go through the outfits and, the, and yeah. talk about what will work on camera what won't and then we just start shooting and yeah. one of the things that i'm known for um for better or for worse uh is i'm not afraid to go pose and show you how to do the pose which the is kind of gorilla. amazing <laughs> because <laughs> on on uh on the zoom camera right now i know i may seem like average size but i'm not average size i'm quite a large individual so <laughs> that usually enough is disarming enough and gives confidence to clients to be like okay yeah. like if he's willing to do this why can't i yeah um and you know throughout the whole time i'm you know i'm very cognizant of the fact that the different dynamic shooting with a male photographer than a fe- with them with a female photographer so I'm always, you know, asking and approaching, saying, "Hey, can I adjust your hair?" Anytime I enter that personal space, um, I'm going to say something, right? Um, and and that's kind of how the shoot goes. And the shoot goes for about two hours, and then and then once that's up, we wrap up. We set up an appointment for your ordering session, and then um, now that I have a studio, I can do it here rather than going to people's houses. Yeah. Um, so it's a little bit more of a private location to view images, um, but then you go through and you see your images, yeah. and they're fully edited, um, yeah. they're already done, and then you choose what you want to keep and what you don't keep. It uh, it it gets deleted, and you have your images from your shoot. And we offer packages from very small ten image album all the way up to, you know, if someone wanted to, they could buy all their photos. Um, right. And the so, product itself, like, I'm not going to show you my pictures, everyone world, but I do want to say like the process, I have my little folder here oh, and I that. love this. Like, this is something I treasure. And I just love that. Like Ryan is saying, you sit down, you can like select like literally the color, the material, everything that you want. Um, and like when you open it, it's so professional. Like you have gloves so that you don't dirty your pictures, you know? And so like the care that you put into everything that you deliver to your clients is to me phenomenal. And it was yeah. such a wonderful experience. I, I appreciate it. it. Yeah. You, you, you know, a lot of people, you know, the, the thing that always comes down to is Ryan, how much? And, <laughs> and I, I think, um, People who have either hired wedding photographers or have hired engagement photographers aren't yeah. used to paying that much for photos. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, I'd say most clients usually spend two to three thousand mm-hmm. um, dollars. Some do a little bit more, some do a little bit less. But but there's a reason behind that. You're this isn't just social media sharing type photos where you end up with sixty to hundred photos that are just you may not be happy with these these are tailored customized to you um obviously more skin showing so there's a lot more work with retouching a lot that goes into it but i think what you held up right there is is the other part of that cost which is premium products that you've customized yourself that you've chosen everything from the cover to to which photos are going into that album and any of the other extras that you may have on as add-ons for your package and right you know all of the material we source, it's all, you know, it's archival quality. So this is this is lasting forever. This isn't just like a flimsy magazine. This is something yeah. that you can cherish forever. And you always talk about, you know, it's 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 an investment in yourself. Someone who chooses to, you know, do a boudoir shoot has, you know, is, is pre- prepared, like personally prepared for something. Um, for me, it was, it was a pivotal moment in my personal growth in my life. So I, it was something that I wanted to do for myself. And yes, like certainly, you know, my husband loves the pictures and I have that little beautiful, like folio that you gave me. So I put like, you know, one, one with me in a veil. Cause I, you know, we did some with my, my wedding veil because I had never really had professional pictures taken at my wedding. So it was very important to me to capture those things. So like I have that beautiful folio with two 
you know, two of my favorites, you know, for him and, you know, he has them on his bedside. So it's, it, it's just beautiful. Um, and they're great memories to, to cherish and everything else. And it captures a moment in my life that was truly important for me. Um, and, and, and I think that's what's important, right? Is yeah. it's, it is an investment in yourself. And, you know, I, I've gone through it as the photography is not cheap, right? Yeah. From, from renting a studio to, to buying top notch equipment to um, the time it takes to edit photos, it, it, it's not cheap. And I feel guilty sometimes how much money I'm spending, right? <laughs> um, because it's like, I'm spending it on me. Really, I'm not. I'm spending it on me for my clients to provide the best services. But at the right. end of the day, I feel like it's on me. And I think that sometimes as an individual stepping away as a photographer, especially as someone who has a family and has kids, there's a little bit of guilt that comes into it that do I really deserve this? And I'm telling you, people deserve this. Um, uh, I think Another thing was there's a lot of body dysmorphia and I think social media has only kind of um, exasperated that. Yeah. And it's really hard to look at ourselves in the mirror yeah. and all we're going to do is pick out our flaws and that's not what we do. I'm going to sit there and I'm going to make sure the light's hitting you just right. And I'm going to put you in a pose if you're self-conscious about a body part that hides that body part. If there's something that you're proud of, we're going to accentuate that. We're really going to, it's a, it's a custom experience that really, my goal is I want my clients to look at themselves as a piece of art because they are, right? Yeah. But, and, yeah. it, you know, it sounds like cheesy photographers. So it's like this crossover of photographers slash car salesman talk. But, but I think as you've seen, um, this is something I'm actually pretty passionate about. So Fair. You know, Paul, Paul is a part of it, but we have a small, nice little private group on Facebook where there's a lot of positivity. And, yeah. you know, I'd say about 20% of it's actually boudoir content. The rest of it's making sure that you value, value yourself as a person. And yeah, I, think I was just going to bring that up. You, they have, you have that VIP group on Facebook and it's so beautiful to see, you know, women supporting women, um, sharing their experience, you know, uh, and it's like, I felt very empowered and beautiful. Like even within that group, even if it started within that group, just to share like, girls, this is like, this was my photo shoot, you know, or like, here's a picture from it. And, you know, the love that you get within that group is, so amazing and and it's like palpable you know and it's really nice to see it growing and growing and growing um and i love that you know you're always sharing you know engaging with us you know on a week every day you know but on a weekly Almost, basis yeah. but like it's you know it, it's asking you know asking us to share something positive that happened this week or you know anything or sharing some great quotes that are reminding us of you know how much we should be loving ourselves for you know who we are and and like it, it's it really is a terrible thing how you know critical it, anyone man or woman can be of themselves of their bodies and uh to go through an experience like that and to have the support systems in place you know like you you you're starting to set up and you have quite successfully i feel like it's growing that you know you're um, your VIP group there is growing so well. Um, and I'd love to just keep it going. I'm going to put up, you know, I'm going to put your handle and, you know, people where to find you. Um, because I feel like, um, that's something that everyone should have now. Um, do you usually invite people into that group only if they've worked with you so that there is that, um, camaraderie, or I guess that connection between, um, the, the followers that are on it? So um, that group's for everyone, right? Well, I, we should specify, it's not for everyone. Guys, I'm sorry, you're not part of the group. <laughs> I'm the only guy in there and I'm the photographer and it's my group. So I, I, I make my own rules as it comes to me. Um, it, it's a woman's only group, it's private. We should say it's private because there's two key things to that. It's a safe space, which means that comments and likes and reactions on social media 
don't get seen by your mom, your siblings, <laughs> right? Yeah. Or anybody else that you could feel like you'd be judged from. The only people who see you react to stuff and comment on stuff are people in the group. Yeah. Um, also, Facebook sucks. Let's just say it. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> Facebook doesn't distinguish boudoir photography between pornography. And there's yeah. a big difference there. There's a, some people don't think there is, but for me, it's a wide chasm. Yeah. Um, of exploitation versus self-empowerment and, and, and self-love and body acceptance. Um, and, and by keeping it private, it also allows us to share images without uh, staying, kind of staying off Facebook's radar. Right, I love that. So, so uh, keep anybody who's interested in boudoir photography, I, I even say anybody who's just interested in positive content, right? There's too much crap on social media. Yes. Um, it, it's the it's, it's the place to be yeah yeah I, I think that's exactly how we feel and and why we started what we do because there is just so much negativity out there whether it's in mainstream media or just people attacking each other you know like you're saying like facebook is a crazy space even in like in any social media space you know you have keyboard commandos you have people who you know think nothing of what they're saying or doing behind the safety of their computer but they could be really you know harming other people and not really taking others into account so create these safe spaces for them is is crucial and you know sharing positivity light laughter like anything yeah. like that just to to have that resource is you know that that's really what it's all about um, like the meme I shared today in the group, right? Yeah. Which was very current event-ish to the whole Chris Rock, Will Smith thing with, with Will Smith being the boudoir photographer. And, That's right. Uh, and Chris Rock being being the self-doubt. And, you know, I think right. quarantine and the two plus years of COVID really, really took a lot of us for a spin. And we're entirely too hard on ourselves. And listen, it happened to me too you know i got the COVID 19 like i you know i'm we we all aren't in our best shape after 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 COVID. but you know we need to learn to accept our, accept ourselves at any size yes. right yeah because otherwise we're just chasing we're just chasing what we think we want to look like rather than accepting who we are yes that's crucial that's crucial it's not yeah I agree. And one thing that I also love um, when, before we started working together as well was like, you know, going through your portfolio and really understanding what boudoir means and what, and asking yourself, what does it mean to you? You know, um, I remember seeing some of my favorite pictures, like a lot of people, you say boudoir and they think, like you were saying, like they think um, pornography or they think like, you know, you have to be fully nude to take boudoir photos and you don't, you know, it's what are you comfortable with? How do you feel sexy? You know, there was a beautiful girl in like an off the shoulder sweater. And I yeah. was like, that is beautiful. That is it. That's, you know, and it can just mean so many things to so many people, but it's finding that self-love and capturing that in, in the pictures, however, however that feels right to you. And um, that's one thing that I learned through my process with, with you um, was accepting, you know, who, who I was, where I was and, and feeling sexy, even if it's just like in a t-shirt, you know, like we talked yeah. about me loving Mana. I have like one of my favorite pictures coming out of Ryan's session is a picture of me in, in just like my favorite concert t-shirt from one of my favorite yeah. bands. And it was like, it, I just felt good. It felt right. Um, and I, I, I feel like that is something that people need to hear as well, you know? Yeah. And, and I think that, you know, having run the group and parallel to the photography business has been helpful for me and insightful for me because you know, I've gotten feedback from certain members in the group that, um, well, no one's as large as me, right? 
but we have to remember we got to stop we got to break down the paradigms of which we're normally thinking because that person who's skinny is dealing with their own self-image and body issues as well we don't know their health problems we don't know what they've gone through we don't know their journey and that's kind of what i, I love to capture in my photographers to get to know my clients a little bit better yeah and understand what they want out of the experience because I want to give that to them. I want to make sure that um, they're finally being able to love and accept themselves, no matter what what you know prior experiences or health issues or anything that they had. Um, yeah. yeah, that's it's so true. Um, I feel like when when I took my pictures and I I, uh, I own a scale, but I never look at it. It's like tucked under there, and I've had it there for years. Like I don't. I don't like relying on scales or numbers or anything to tell me if I'm, if I look good or should feel good about where I am. Um, and I feel like I've always struggled with that. You know, I, you know, it, and a year ago I weighed more than I weigh now, but I loved it because I felt like I got to enjoy my curves a little more, you know, and, and it, it began validating, um, like, you know, what my husband tells me, right. My partner, you know, and he's, you know, he's telling like, I love your tummy. I love, you know, this curve. I love this and that. And it took like, I did not understand like why you would like that. Right. Like it to me personally for a long time. And I feel like, that moment when you become like accepting of yourself and loving to yourself that all that you start seeing that beauty and you start mm -hmm. seeing that you know seeing that in yourself and you know for me this that this photo shoot experience was a, like like i said before it was a huge part of it for me part of that journey um and it's still going you know yeah. and it doesn't mean that it's the only time i'm going to do it i feel like it's something that i would love to experience again um when you know i feel like it, i'm ready for that again you know yeah. and, and i think that you know i've seen i've seen kind of what you were touching on is i've seen a difference between those clients who are just say looking to do a photo shoot yeah. because their fiance is hinted at it as a wedding gift and they right. just are just trying to get through the photo shoot yeah that's hard versus those who are doing it because they want to see themselves in a way they haven't and those two things can be they're not mutually exclusive there can be some crossover between them yes. but i think the what i've noticed is the people who are just doing it just because someone else is you know a significant other has mentioned it mm -hmm. they don't get the same out of the experience um, right they typically, they typically uh, end up buying less photos. And, you know, there's a couple of times we'll, where I'll stop the ordering session because I want to learn too. I want to learn from them. And I'll be like, hey, I noticed that you don't pick any of the photos where you have your eyes closed. Right. What's the, you know, is there a specific reason I'd love to? Yeah. Like, I just don't like how my face looks like that. Okay. Right. And, 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 so so it, it helps me learn and, and understand you know knowing that motivation for a shoot is a big thing and like i said you can totally be doing it for yourself and also for your fiance yeah. but if you're just doing it just because someone's asking for it you know let's change that mindset before you before you get there and and try to get more out of that experience for you yeah i love that that's so important and i love how much care you put into your clients like I just don't think you find that everywhere. I, I know you don't find that everywhere. <laughs> I would hope that I would hope that I'm friends with everyone. <laughs> you know, um, you know, it's it, it's one of those tough situations because because it is kind of a it is a luxury experience, as I would say, because it's not a necessity. I think it is. I think everyone needs to do it, but that's just my thought. Um, uh, but. <laughs> But um, it, it's not something that you do every day. And I want everyone to have the best experience because I'm very cognizant of, of what they're investing and, and the trust that they're putting in my hands to do that. Because I was, 
you know, like I said, I was married 20 years ago. We got married young and broke and had kids young and broke. And I know exactly what it's like to, you know, sacrifice a little bit to get something that we really want to do. So. Yeah. And so has photography always been a part of your life, you know, growing up? Uh, have you always been interested in that? Or was that something that you just kind of fell into, like maybe in your teens or later, you know, in your 20s? Did it become a thing? So, I hope my parents don't find this podcast. Um, <laughs> my, now you have to tell me. <laughs> so, so my dad always had a camera around yeah. um, growing up. And, you know, for, for his own reasons, I think he wanted to capture a lot of, of memories growing up as a family, but um, it never was really composed. It was always very candid. And, you know, this is pre-digital, right? So we're talking like <laughs> closet full of prints, like yeah. every, everywhere. And I think that that was a kind of at least an exposure to understanding like, oh, hey, well, this is something I can do. I can do this. And yeah. then, but then I kind of took a spin on it where, you know, I'm going to make it the best possible looking image that I can, right? Huh? I, I don't want to catch somebody where they're like, kind of have a, right, like yeah. on their face because they got <laughs> Play that back on plenty of that right yeah <laughs> pause screen that one pause. <laughs> um where 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 i want people to look their best you know i had my own issues growing up where i was very self-conscious i i by my freshman year i was the height i am now right i was always a foot or two above my friends i was yeah. lanky i drew attention to myself by my appearance and i hated it um uh so I think over the years, I've always had that natural eye uh, and and then it just kind of evolved from there. And then I wanna say, what was it about five years ago, we had we had a pretty rough year within our family um, for a lot of different reasons. Um, it was worse, right? And so we talk about, talk about mental health and, and body acceptance. I had to go through my own journey as well. And part of that journey part of that personal therapy was photography um, because it was something that I could sit there and focus on and focus my energy rather than focusing on what I thought were my problems. And so from there, it just kind of eased into it. And, you know, and, and then here we are, you know, now sitting in the studio, it's kind of like a very, of a very self-fulfilling moment, right? Yes. Um, don't get me wrong. Paula knows this. This is not, you know, <laughs> This is, uh, I'd love for this to be my full-time job right now. Uh, it, it's a second job as right. of this moment, but hopefully the studio will be kind of the launching point to make this kind of the, the full-time gig so I can leave my corporate career Yeah, behind. oh, I can't wait. I can't wait to see that announcement. <laughs> it's a great- so that's kind of how that's kind of how we stumbled into it. You know, it was a, it was a way of, of of healing myself and doing it by helping others heal themselves as well. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that funny how that works? Like, like you, you hear it all the time and we say it all the time too, like put good out there and good will come back to you, you know? And, and it, it plays itself out in so many different ways, helping others and good will come back to you, you know? Put a smile on someone's face, like like compliment somebody, and good will come back to you. Like it, you know, good doesn't always come it's, back in the way that you think it will. Um, but suddenly you'll find yourself in a situation where, like, oh wow, like there is so much to be said about um, building that community around you and and really selflessly, you know. And sometimes it's through your work, and sometimes it's just through through living but you know that the, the so, universe rewards you back can we curse on here yes okay <laughs> like it takes a lot of energy to be an asshole yes it really does yeah and, and frankly i just don't have energy for that and i've never understood how people can constantly be on guard to be a jerk to somebody or always have something to say or to like you were saying earlier be a key, uh, keyboard warrior and and just tear down other people on the internet that you haven't met 
it's it's a lot and it, it's just not worth it so much yeah. easier what do they say it's like 26 muscles to frown and only two to smile or whatever it's it is true right it's like it's so much easier just to bring that positivity uh yeah. than to than to focus on the negative yeah and another one of our favorite quotes is which I don't know verbatim, but that Maya Angelou quote where it, you know, people might not remember um, what you've said to them, but they'll remember how you made them feel, you know? And I feel like your, your, even though it's like your second job, I feel like it's such a meaningful part of your life and what you do. And it's, it's like, this is how you're making your mark in the world, yeah. you know? Yeah, and you know, it, it, my kids see it too. They yeah. get it, right? You know, and I think um, that's been what's been fulfilling lately with opening up the studio is getting, you know, especially the older kids who are very yeah. close to, you know, going out on their own and starting their own life journeys to see that if you have a passion and you want to pursue it and you care about it enough, you can actually realize it. And all the way down to, so I have four kids. I have a, I have a high school I have a, sorry, I have a college freshman, a high school sophomore, an eighth grader, and a fourth grader. And even the fourth grader, if you were to ask her what dad does for photography, she's, she did this, not me. I don't put words in her mouth. She started spouting out about self-empowerment and learning to love your body, right? Just because she's around it and she, and she hears it and she sees it, yeah. right? Now, don't get me wrong. I've had to disclaim this on... Yeah. Um, other other uh, podcast I did about a year ago is no I don't edit with my photos out in the open my door is right. closed and now that I'm at the studio I'll be editing at the studio yeah. um, so I do maintain that sort of uh, you know separation of church and state if you will <laughs> at home, as it relates to boudoir photography but right. um, but but they get it and and yeah. you know uh, I always tell my wife loves telling the story at wedding expos is that last year as we were growing, she did her own boudoir shoot. And, you know, um, she had her own self image issues. And after she did the shoot and after she saw the final images, she had such a change in mindset because of that. She uh, bought her first bikini and I think probably well, at that point it would probably have been 18, 19 years, right? Since uh, since I've known her, she's right. never been in a bikini, but that gave her the confidence to say, "Hey, like I love the skin I'm in," right? Yeah. Um, so we're a very, despite the curse words and other shenanigans at the yeah. house, we're, we're <laughs> we kind of abide by the the don't raise our kids to be assholes type of uh, yeah. Mentality. Because they can be, let's be honest. Oh, kids are horrible. Kids are, kids are the worst. But they're crazy. Let's have four of them. <laughs> oh, what was that about? <laughs> oh, I know. And it's so it's so interesting how like the, the range and like where they are in their lives. Are they very involved in each other's lives? You're like, even from your oldest down to the, what's it, fourth grader? Yeah. Um, so we live in a very humble home here in Norwalk yeah. that keeps us pretty much on top of each other. Um, so there's no <laughs> avoiding siblings for too long. Yeah, uh, yeah. Learning remote learning at the height of at the height of COVID was the worst because you had I was working via webcam. My wife, who's finishing up her classes at U UConn, was doing her stuff. There was one day where all six of us were on devices. Lord. doing our separate classes and you can all hear each other then they start nagging at each other because someone yeah. else is loud and it it's it's a lot but Isn't um it? you know they have the typical sibling issues right. but at, <laughs> at the end of the day uh one thing that we take pride in is where possible we try to get the family around the table for dinner right my gosh we're you know, huge on that Yes, it, it's huge. It makes a difference. It's where you yes. it's where you learn so much about your kids, and, and and not only that, teach them how to like have some level of manners. You know, yes. as kids. Definitely. So. Definitely, we're we're very much into. It's what we say all the time. Like if it's the last thing we do, like whatever 
the, the time shifts. Yeah, when they were younger, they, you know, were like early bird special all the time. But, you know, <laughs> they're getting older. Yeah. It's like, let's say like six o'clock, like we're sitting down at the table, you will be home for dinner. And then like, whatever, but like, it's so important. It's where we share, it's where we communicate, it's where they can like, breathe and let their and just like blah, let it all out tell us what happened you know and and sometimes we're playing uno at the table but that's whatever like we're playing card games or playing board games anything to just kind of like communicate and share yeah so. i mean like our oldest uh you know during quarantine came out at the dinner table that's the kind of environment that we that that's we kind great. of have. And it was uh, kind of amusing because like I think she was expecting a little bit of a reaction out yeah. of it. And I was just yeah. like, okay, cool. Like <laughs> I'm sorry that I didn't get upset. Like <laughs> sorry that I'm such a supportive parent. Um, oh, I love yeah. it. I yeah, love it. Good times at the read house. <laughs> good times at the read house. <laughs> I love it. So what's the next chapter, Ryan? Anything else other than like the studio is your attention, like just full blown studio or are there other, any other things in the works in the back of your mind, like five-year plan or something? You know, I, I think that five-year plan is really making this be my full-time gig. Yeah. Um, and, and really have it be uh, kind of the long-term uh, next chapter of mine. Yeah. I think spending as much energy as I did doing all the logistics of setting up the studio, putting in floors, painting, designing, and everything else. I kind of took my eye off the ball with, you know, actually going out and trying to get clients and, and, and do it's hard when you're like a one man show, right? Like when you're, yeah. it's not an easy task. It's not, you know, no, <laughs> running a business on yeah. your own, especially while holding, you know, a full-time job to get you by and support your, you know, your dream as you move forward. It's not easy. Yeah. So, uh, you know, at least in the short term, it's to go back and now focus on, you know, what we do, which is taking photographs. Sure. Buying a lot of stuff off Amazon and bringing packages to the studio is fun. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But we're here to take photos and, yeah. and you know, and we're here to change lives. And that's really, that's really what we're, what, you know, it's time to get back to focusing on that and yeah. get off Amazon. So what's the best way for people to reach you? Okay, quick story, quick story. The okay. whole reason I got back into boudoir photography was TikTok during quarantine. TikTok. Because right? my wife was my wife was on TikTok and I was like, get off that damn app. But then yeah. I found myself on it, which then got me like taking photography as a business more seriously. Yeah. And so here we are. So <laughs> I'm on TikTok, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook. Uh, people can find me on uh, Instagram and TikTok at ryanreed.photo and then on Facebook it's just Ryan Reed Photography and and then obviously the VIP group is something where we share the link uh, you know as, as people need it because it's a little bit weird I have to give the actual link um, but I'm always on my phone probably responding to stuff with way too late at night but but it is what it is that's one of the things we pride ourselves in is you know how available we are. yeah love it i absolutely love it ryan thank you thank you thank you for taking the time to chat with us me chris left us <laughs> poo poo chris <laughs> we'll get his boudoir shoot down the road we'll do a boudoir oh God, boudoir shoot down. it'll be like a george costanza I think it's only fitting since it's been a year since yours that it's time for his for him. To I think so. Him, right? I think he's down. I don't know. Oh, but I did like all jokes aside. Um, there was one semi recent boudoir shoot that you did, and I was falling in love with the pictures that that you and your client were sharing. Um, but she was pregnant, right? Mm -hmm. There was a in the and yes she was in like beautiful lingerie her belly was showing and i just love pregnant women anyway um but then her her fiance or her husband was, was in the in the pictures with her and in some of them and yeah. i thought they came out so beautiful like and it was such a loving moment moments that you were capturing um yeah i just love that and i wanted to put it out there because in that sense they are open to you know the husband or the significant other to be a part of it. Um, 
because they they came out great. <laughs> P.S. And and husbands, you don't have to have your shirt off like he did in the photos. He just happened to be a bodybuilder as well, so for him it was just like that yeah. worked. Right? Um, you know, I actually shot a client shoot. I think a couple of weeks after that it was another maternity shoot, and the yeah. husband was in that. And uh, you know, they're great. They make for great assistance during the shoot. If I need somebody to hold a reflector or something like that, the yeah. husbands are always happy to join in. So. And I feel like, I don't know, I'm thinking back to when I was pregnant, you know, I have two kids, um, but I feel like having my husband there would, at least for a part, like, I feel like at the beginning or something, it would make me feel comfortable, you know what I mean? Like, cause I feel like they're, it, there's a comfort to their, them holding you or like hands on your back, you know, there's something just really nice and special about that time in your life to begin with. And that's another one where like, ah. Oh, I'm not gonna have another kid, Ryan. But uh, neither am I. I it's could, okay. <laughs> shop is closed. But if I, rewind, <laughs> if I could rewind and capture that, the the way that you were capturing that yeah. client that I'm thinking of, and whatever, it was like that. I would. Oh my god, I would love that. So I mean, something to consider. Not just weddings. Not just boudoir. Not just engagement. Yeah. But because I think, I think it was very much. It was yes there were some photos where she had a a bra on in the photo yeah like a kind of more of a lingerie like type lacy bra. you know yeah other than that and maybe a calvin klein bra and another one other than that it was very much just a intimate yeah couples maternity shoot yeah a little bit more special than just going outside going to going to a local park and taking some photos correct Correct. Yeah. And I think like opening it up to something like that is, is also important because, you know, people, there might be people out there who are not looking for those pictures in the park. They want it to feel a little more intimate and being able to show them what that could mean for them. Um, I think it's, it's worth asking Ryan about it because <laughs> they came out absolutely beautiful. Um, and, and so special. I mean, I would be blowing yeah. those up around my house. You know, they're just gorgeous. That was my last little note. <laughs> 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 but thank you, Ryan, so much for taking time out of your day. I know you're so busy, but um, I've been looking forward to this chat for a long time. And I'm so glad that we finally made it happen. <laughs> yeah, now we got to get you back in the studio. Not, <laughs> not necessarily for a boudoir shoot, yeah. People that don't know Paula's a fantastic artist, and <laughs> I've asked her uh, if she's uh, take a peek at the walls and see what she could add. Yeah, to. we're gonna decorate now. Mm -hmm. Here we go. I'm excited, <laughs> and thank you for letting me be a part of that too. <laughs> yes, <laughs> <laughs> I love it, Ryan. Thank you so much, everyone. Please get in touch with Ryan because he is phenomenal. I'm so glad you got to hear him talk. Um, he really is this friendly. <laughs> <laughs> at all times. <laughs> so thanks so much, Ryan. All the success in the world. Um, I'm so happy to see you in that in that studio now. Um, because you know, you've been talking about it for a while. So this is a wonderful, wonderful step in the right direction. Thanks, Paula. All right. Well, we'll talk soon. I'm sure we'll see you soon as yep. well. <laughs> yep. All right, talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Stop. Wait for it. No, stop. <gasps> oh, I love that one.